Here we'll briefly talk about a few types of electronic transitions. These transitions are covered more thoroughly in organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry. So we won't talk too much about them, but we'll just give a general overview of them. Let's look at pi pi star absorption. Now recall when we did the Huckel molecular orbital treatment of butadiene, we obtained bonding and antibonding pi orbitals. Recall that in our treatment there, we had a basis set consisting of just p orbitals that were not bond, um, were not involved in the sp3 hybridization of the carbon, and we combined these four p orbitals to get four molecular orbitals, and then we put electrons in to fill them up like this. So this is bonding orbitals here. We'll call them bonding pi orbitals, and here these would be anti-bonding pi orbitals or pi star. We can imagine a transition of an electron going from a bonding pi orbital to an anti-bonding pi orbital and that will be known as a pi to pi star transition. So that's one kind of or one type of absorption spectroscopy, one type of absorption, pi to pi star transitions. Uh, typically as we said those are conjugated systems and the absorption there is in the ultraviolet and again these are electronic absorptions. Let's look at another one, n to pi star. In this case, you're going from a non-bonding orbital to an anti-bonding pi orbital. Typically, this occurs in the UV. It's a forbidden transition. And typically, you find this kind of transition for molecules that have a double bond O in it. Now, recall that, for example, when we looked at bonding of water, did a molecular orbital diagram of water, we had something like this where these were bonding here, these were anti-bonding up here, but in between the bonding and anti-bonding there was this non-bonding orbital from oxygen. So typically you would have orbitals on the oxygen, atomic orbitals on the oxygen binding to various things, and then you would have atomic orbitals on the oxygen that were not involved in bonding. Those would be right here, and if you have electrons here, you could take an electron and go to an anti-bonding, and this is a pi, it would be an anti-bonding pi orbital, and that would be a n to pi star, n for non-bonding to pi star transition where this would be a anti-bonding pi orbital. A third kind is charge transfer. These first two you might see a lot of in organic chemistry when you look at spectroscopy and organic chemistry. These last two will be for inorganic chemistry. Let's talk about charge transfer as a type of electronic transition and let's draw and it turns it occurs in transition metal and so let's draw an octahedral complex. Here's a metal, a transition metal in the middle, and out here we have ligands. And if you do a molecular orbital treatment of this complex, typically what you might find is, well, what you're going to find is some orbitals here, and let's say th this orbital is primarily on the metal, and this orbital here is primarily on the ligand. And if you have electrons this way and then you have say some electrons here. If you take an electron from an orbital that's primarily on the metal and here you put it up here to an orbital, a molecular orbital that's primarily on the ligand, this is called a metal ligand charge transfer absorption. What you're doing is taking some charge which is primarily on the metal and shifting it over to primarily on the ligand. So that's what's called a charge transfer from the metal to the ligand. On the other hand, if this is primarily on the ligand and this orbital up here is on the metal, then when you do this transition you're going from the ligand to the metal and so this would be a ligand metal charge transfer absorption. Again, it comes from just molecular orbital treatment of transition metal compounds. You look at transitions and you identify various molecular orbitals as being primarily on the metal or the ligand. Depending on which way it goes, you have a metal ligand charge transfer or a ligand metal charge transfer. And finally, let's look at DD transitions. There are two ways to look at this. One is by what's called crystal field theory. So in this case, you have your d orbitals in the transition metal, again this is transition metal, and these are atomic orbitals, and then when you put a ligand around them, typically what happens is that the energy levels split because the d 
If for an octahedral complex, for example, the ligands will affect the d orbitals differently, depending upon the d or whether the d orbitals are aligned along the axis, in between the axis, primarily along the z axis, and so on. So what you get is a splitting of the normally degenerate atomic d orbitals on the metal into two levels. This is for octahedral, and this is called crystal field splitting. So the idea is that this is like a crystal. These ligands are hanging around for some length of time and this crystal generates a magnetic field or sorry electric field which splits the energy levels. Then what you have is transitions between energy levels say going down up from here to here. As an example let's take copper and just put copper 2 plus in water you find there's six water molecules that coordinate with the copper. This is copper 2 plus. Let's get rid of this for now. And copper 2 plus is a D9. So let's put nine electrons in here. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So there is a empty place. So we can take an electron from this and put it up here. That's an absorption, electronic absorption. And that will correspond to, in the spectrum, correspond to absorption in the visible region, as is a charge transfer complex. That's one way to look at it, and that's fairly simple, which is taught uh, sometimes in introductory chemistry. A more complex example is that you have molecular orbitals being formed. So here you have for the D, you might have some for the S, and some for the P, and this is on the metal. And then typically you might have over here some orbitals corresponding to the ligands. I don't know how many we'll have here, but just let me write that, ligands. And then just like we did before, you'll form molecular orbitals. You have to worry about symmetry and energy and things like that, just like we did before. And we won't go through the details, but you'll get a bunch of molecular orbitals here. Whereas over here we have atomic. So you're combining the atomic orbitals to form the molecular orbitals. There you'll just start filling in electrons, so on. And then you could have transitions between these molecular orbitals here. And if this molecular orbital is primarily on the ligand and that's on the uh, metal, then you have a ligand to metal tra charge transfer, for example. Uh, but that's another way to look at transitions. Instead of looking at atomic d orbitals, you combine them to form molecular orbitals. So that's a brief overview of the types of electronic transitions. We didn't go into much detail. Other chemistry courses you'll take as a chemistry BS major, we'll cover those in more detail.